world headquarters of Common Sense. Talk Radio. And youth, good morning to you. Uh, good morning, Julia. How are you? Um, well, I'm, 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 I'm well. Um, but um, I'm, that's because I haven't had to live or tried to get around the the protests that Extinction Rebellion has had uh, over the last couple of days. I've I've endured them many times before uh, where I work. Uh, but um, tell us why we are still seeing these protests because this has all been about raising awareness of the climate catastrophe that we're told is coming. Um, do we? Am I not right in thinking that we talk of virtually nothing else? In which case, why are you still trying to raise awareness? Well, I mean, that's the problem, to be honest. There's a lot of talk, but very little action that's happening at the minute. So, you know, Extinction Rebellion was formed three three years ago now, and it has done a great job of raising awareness. You know, it's a great platform for climate change, but we're still seeing very little action. We're on the streets uh, in London at the minute because we're calling for an end to all new fossil fuel investments in addition to the original three demands that we have. Well, yeah, I mean, your original three demands were, I mean, completely and utterly uh, unrealisable. You know, you wanted, what, to get rid of uh, of all fossil fuels, all carbon emissions by 2025, net zero by 2025. I mean, not going to happen. You know that. I know that. Um, it was never, ever tenable. I'm not even sure 20, 2050 is is either, either achievable or desirable. But you say you want an end to new fossil fuel investment well we know that there's this push now to invest more in north sea oil and uh, and gas extraction we've got this review of uh, of shale gas extraction also called fracking uh, as well that's going on the reality is no matter how green you want to be and no matter how quickly you want to do it we're still going to have to rely on fossil fuels for quite some years probably decades to come um, do you not accept that well, now is the perfect time to switch away from fossil fuels. We are in a cost of living crisis where, you know, come October, one in four people are not going to be able to afford their energy bills, while companies like BP and Shell make over £40 billion pounds of profits. That's, How is that's, that irrele- that's irrelevant, though, isn't it? That's How's not that's not that's no, that is irrelevant because I'm I'm okay we can we can tax the profits of the other companies and the fossil fuel whatever that's fine but that that doesn't solve the problem of how people light their homes and heat their homes and run factories and run their cars but now is the perfect time to start investing in those renewables you know, not, no saying- no we don't need to start investing billions and billions and billions of pounds is going into those renewables already but it's not it's not enough though it's not the enough the infrastructure isn't isn't there uh, at the minute, um, but we need an emergency response because we are in a climate emergency, okay. and we need that transition to start today, and we need it to be as quick as possible. I don't, I don't accept the idea that we are in an emergency. We need an emergency response to that. We need an emergency response to lots of other things. But but even if we had, even if we did everything that you wanted, and we absolutely moved to you know literally as fast as we can move to all renewables, everyone you know electric cars or even no cars. I think that's probably what you'd want. Um, and and an entirely renewable energy, A, it wouldn't be reliable because we haven't got the battery storage right now and not going to have that for decades to come. Um, and B, we'd all be living in the cold and the dark for quite a few years if until if and when that happened. Are you basically saying that, that someone, you know, an 80-year-old who's worried about her heating bill will be less worried if she actually couldn't put her central heating on at all because you basically said you can't have any more can't have any more use of fossil fuels. You can't have any more investment in fossil fuels. I mean, um, we're calling for an end to all new investment in fossil fuels. Yeah. We're, we need this transition to be as quick as possible. We're not calling qu- for, for people to be living in the cold, uh, you know. Okay, but, no, but most people in this country heat their homes with gas central happen. heating. Okay, we are not going in the next couple of years to change everyone's heating system. And frankly, you're going to take my gas thermostat out of my cold, dead hands more than I'd give that up for a heat pump that doesn't work. But if you don't invest in more gas and oil and other fossil fuels, then you're going to see those prices go up and up and up and up. And the people you worried about facing the cost of living crisis, they're going to be facing it even more. Are you saying to that 80 year old, well, sorry, you're just going to have to live in the cold next winter because because Chris thinks that we should move away from fossil fuels sooner. But as those prices of oil goes up and up and up, the prices of the sustainable green energy needs to come down and down and down. The International Energy Agency, you know, the more conservative of, you know, intergovernmental uh, organisations said that in order to reach 1.5 degrees, and I quote, from today, no investment in new fossil fuel supply projects. We are in a climate emergency. We need an emergency response. Okay, again, 
keep saying that. I mean, you know, you can put it on a T-shirt all you want. It doesn't make it true. But I'm, but I'm saying, even if we have the emergency response, even if you cut the renewable cost, even if you did all of that, you would still have millions upon millions, tens of millions of people in this country and elsewhere who would be reliant on fossil fuels. And those prices would go up if we didn't have more investment. Are you saying you're happy for those people to live in the cold and the dark while, while you get your way? Because that's basically what the result would be. Uh, no, no, we're no, not. And as you're I said, not saying that. We, so how we, are they going to be heating their quick, homes? We're calling for a quick transition. I'm interested, Julia, in uh, why you think there's not an emergency, a climate oh, emergency. Right. I would answer that, except we are short on time and we've had this conversation so many times. Um, that I'm, I'm just, I just, I think it would just be boring for my listeners. But I'm happy to get you on another time where we've got more time to discuss that I, if you I, want. Just, but you, honestly, you, I'd like to discuss. I, to I'd like to discuss. I, no, okay. I'd like to discuss though. You've got these protests. You're raising awareness. You want us to move away from new fossil fuels. You know the government can't do that because we will have a bigger cost of living crisis and and people will be freezing in their homes. Um, and yet you're causing disruption on the roads to ordinary people going about their daily lives. Well, what is the purpose of all of this? The, the purpose is to call for an end to all new investment in fossil fuel projects. But the, the fact of the matter is, the disruption caused at the minute is just a scratch on the disruption that is going to be caused through climate change. I mean, you would have seen the, the videos of floods ripping through people's houses in Germany the other year. Do you know, you know why they were floods in Germany? They, they didn't... From, from wildfires. This, they, this, 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 I'm this sorry, right this, is just, well. this is just nonsense. They weren't London. caused by climate change, either of those things. Why do you think that? I don't think it. I know it because I actually look at facts rather than just chanting T-shirt slogans. What what facts do you look at? The actual facts, which are what? Why don't tell you what? Before we speak again, you go away and look at the reasons why we had flooding in Germany, and look at the reasons why we've had wildfires. Which, by the way, we have every year in every country. I'm, I'm, I'm willing to have that conversation with you now, Julia. I've, no, I've, I've, well, I've, the thing I've, is, I've got I've, two I've more guests to get to before nine o'clock, so I can't have that full conversation now. Can we just go back to? Is it fair for people like you, because you feel strongly about something, to impose your views, your demands, your, I would say, paranoia about the world's going to end catastrophe, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, on other people, just trying to go about their daily lives, earning a living, getting to and from work, visiting family, having a nice day out on a weekend. I mean, is, why, is it, why is it justifiable for you to impose your views on those people? I mean, Extinction Rebellion's main demand is to set up a citizens' assembly. That's not setting up our. We have a citizens' assembly. It's called the House of Commons. But but you know, I think it's over two thirds of the British public put climate change as one of their top priorities. No, yeah, well, they they, they, all, they all do when our they're asked in a poll. Is broken. Our political system is broken because MPs have interests that are pulling them from side to side. They're not accurately representing their constituents' views. But the citizens' as, assembly, assembly would needed to upgrade democracy. Yes, you take a sample size of the the population mm -hmm. uh, that's you know representative of the wider population that then uh, you know deliberate amongst each other. They hear from experts. They choose. Well, um, you know the the way that we should be going yeah i mean that's that's kind of what we what we do is we elect mps in our democracy to do that and then and, and as we saw not representing the british public at all they decided to vote for a 2050 net zero campaign but there we are we probably share some of the same issues about mps not representing people we will leave it there but chris do come on again i promise i would love to talk to you again when we've got more time uh that is chris i don't have his surname it wasn't supplied he's a spokesman for extinction rebellion youth good talk, Hot talk. Hot talk. Bold talk. talk radio. listen on your smart Speaker. Watch it live on your smart TV. The world headquarters of common sense. Talk radio.